It's all here. Finally, I got my stuff back. This is everything, flex plate, balancer, intake, cam, pistons and rods, all the rings, bearings, brass freeze plugs, crank, heads, block, all this stuff he had at the shop. So happy everything is home and I'm glad that uh, I'm able to move forward because I was holding back, like I said, I was holding back money waiting for some of this stuff to uh, to get back so I knew how much I had to pay so now I can kind of move forward and buy some stuff I needed to get for a while here so let's go through a couple different things so the balancer is from uh, power force the first balancer I had I won't name the, the uh, manufacturer uh, when he put the uh, I had a balancer and flex plate when I put them well I, I gave them to the machinist and he put it on the balancer crank he was like this thing is way off. He said, I should not have to balance this crank this much. There's, I think there's something wrong with either the flex plate or the balancer. So I had, uh, I had this stock flex plate and I had a factory stock um, harmonic balancer. So I took those both up to him. He put it on there and he said, man, this thing is almost dead on with these. He said, I don't know what was wrong with those other two, but they're, they're, they're no good. Uh, and he said he actually has seen um, recently, with some of the Oldsmobile stuff he's done, the um, either the flex plate or the balancer has been off uh, weight-wise because these are externally balanced. So for now, uh, I, I found the Power Force, and he checked out when he's like, oh, yeah, it's perfect. And it's uh, it's got the laser-etched um, timing marks on the side, so it's kind of cool. And uh, I've got the – we, we uh, actually bought another flex plate, and that one was off too. So <laughs> – it's, uh, it's the factory flex plate, I don't know. I think ATI is supposed to be really on the mark, but uh, those are a little expensive and I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do there, so I might end up staying with the, with the, uh, the flex plate. He's, he uh, cleaned it up and then he uh, magnafluxed it and he said he couldn't find anything wrong with it. He said it's in perfect shape, no run out, so okay. He said all the teeth look good, so all right. Anyway, so all that's done. Uh, Heads are from Edelbrock. Those are the old uh, big block heads. And the crankshaft is, uh, has the N casting on it. It's a nodular crank. They did make forged cranks, I think for the 425s. Um, yeah, but good luck buying one of those. <laughs> I'm not paying that kind of money. I, I, I didn't have that kind of money in my budget, so that's that. But anyway, so all that stuff is back. Moving over to the block. This is... Um, I couldn't find a, a VIN number stamped on it, so it just got the casting marks. It is, it is an F block. You can see the F back there. And uh, I think the production run on these was 68 to 74, something like that. So um, yeah, it's in that range. It's, it's an F block. It's not an FA or F1, it's F block. So as soon as I <laughs> got it back and I put it up on the, the um, engine stand, I turned it upside down and I used uh, my air nozzle and I just blew all the coolant passages. And this is what came out. All this trash was still kind of like clinging to the cylinder walls and inside there. So all of this probably would have ended up in my radiator or somewhere had I not gotten it out. So I'm going to do a little bit more cleaning on that, make sure I get up in there maybe with uh, couple of little wire brushes and stuff just to make sure all that scale is loose. And uh, you notice the tire. 
when I was a young man, a uh, buddy of mine, his dad would build engines um, every now and then, and he would always put a tire underneath the engine stand, and I asked him why, and he said, you don't want this thing hitting the garage floor if the engine stand breaks, and he kind of talked about it like that was from experience. So he would always throw uh, a tire under there. This is the only one I had. I really would like to have like an old, uh, like 15 inch, like thick sidewall tire or something to give it a little more cushion. But anyway, that's what I got. And I've always done it with my engines when I had them on the stand, when they just sit there for a while. Just in case, because uh, you go on the internet, you'll find a broken stand here and there. And I don't want to be one of those victims. So anyway, that's all the stuff. Oh, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, so I'm using uh, ARP main studs and uh, I needed to get the uh, block a line honed. So when, uh, when you do that, sometimes what will happen is down in these passages, you will get uh, little tiny pieces of shavings that will get stuck down in there. So uh, I saw a neat trick. The guy takes like a, a really strong magnet and sticks it on the end of like a little like one of those little skinny screwdrivers, sticks it on the end of the shaft and basically kind of magnetizes the screwdriver and he kind of just works his way down in there and I, I saw on the video he was doing, he actually pulled a little little uh, curly cue uh, piece of uh, shaving out of one of the, the galleries, out of one of those mains. So I'll do the same thing just to make sure it's all clear. Blow it out, then I got to degrease it. Um, I will probably run a uh, die grinder over all the edges and kind of deburr it. And then um, get a coat of uh, high temp engine paint on it, some primer, engine primer, and then we'll be ready to go. Anyway, that's everything. I'm very happy. <laughs> so I'm glad everything is back. So listen, this is Hutch and Hutch High Perf. So if uh, you like any of this, do me a favor. Down at the bottom, there's uh, the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment. Tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm right. I don't care, I wanna hear from you guys. Anyway, that's all I have. So for now, have a good one guys. See ya.